running all through this here, but I'm going to restrain myself. Hallelujah. Is there somebody here that has a need? Would you lift your hands? Because we want to go up ahead and pray over you. Yeah, yeah, right here, right here. Right here, the needs. Saints, pray. Lord, would you meet your people's needs according to your riches and glory? In the name of Jesus, today is your day because God's here to meet your needs. God is pouring out his spirit amongst all flesh. Hallelujah! And so we clap our hands. And so we lift our voice. And so we put a little dance in our feet and say, yes, God, to whatever you have us to do today. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness with us.
today, God. We thank you for victory, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. There's nothing you can handle. presence this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. What a beautiful crowd here on Sunday morning. We're so thankful for all of you, especially our guests that are with us. Amen. Welcome. Hallelujah. We're glad that you chose to join us on this Sunday morning. You may be seated for just a moment. Hallelujah. While you're sitting down, pull out your tithe and offering if you would. We're going to collect that in just a minute. Amen. We have revival service tonight. Prayer at 5.30 in the prayer room. And on Wednesday, we have a Martha service, which means you come dressed in your in your work clothes. Amen. We're going to uh, spruce this place up for next week's celebration, Easter celebration, when we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Next Sunday morning, we will be doing that here, and we will have a helicopter drop of candy for the children. And on Sunday night, we will have communion. Amen. So let's remember that. Let's take out our tithe and offering. Lord Jesus, we thank you, God, for your many blessings to your people and to this church. We pray that you will bless each family, Lord, that gives. Lord, we pray that you will bless the rest of this service. In Jesus' name.
faithful G or something. Give me the old faithful Lord of that. Oh, there is nothing, no nothing. There is nothing that my God can do.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Thank the Lord Jesus. Thank the Lord Jesus. <clears throat> you may be seated. Pastor's preaching at our Dave City campus today. And so here I am. Really, so very happy to have this opportunity to speak to you from the Word of God. We need this good Word. It heals, it delivers, it washes away the obscurity of truth and shows the truth clearly, what's really is and really not in this world and in our life. And I love the Word of God. Lamp to my feet, light to my path. Amen. Hallelujah. I would like to speak to you about something that, that I have been very familiar with and still somewhat and very re-familiarized through my studies for this message. I want to speak to you about the realms of the supernatural. This realm is beyond the reach of science and beyond human explanation. The supernatural realm means beyond and above what's natural, supernatural. This is where God operates. It's the realm where heaven and earth intermingle. The realm of interaction between God and man. We sometimes feel that we can do anything and there's nothing that we can't do. But truly, as we sang, there is truly nothing that God cannot do. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm believing him to do some great things in this place today. When you have such a great God and you're serving such a mighty God, you have such a experience with God and you know for sure he's real and in your life, Amen. It is so important that we look into these things of which I'm speaking. Praise God. I'm going to read a few scriptures, begin with the book of Leviticus, and then move it into the New Testament eventually, but I'm just going to read a few scriptures here and there, and some of them are not, I've just, I may have shortened them a little, but they'll be up there, and you can look them up when you get home. But Leviticus 19.31, at first it warns us about the spirit realm and tells us regard not them that have familiar spirits neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them I am the Lord your God God has never tolerated people looking to the dark side because God is light and in him there is no darkness at all He's light at night, he's light in the morning, light in the evening. And we don't look to the dark side. I say this because if anything ever comes to you that does not line up with the Word of God, the Scripture, then we need to just regard, disregard that. And if you don't know if it lines up with the Scripture, well, we have a pastor, thank God or whoever he assigns. Amos, the prophet, in the third chapter, he says concerning God's works, surely the Lord will do nothing, but he, re but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. He is saying here that he gives a special insight into the prophets. He gives a special view and a special experience to the prophet and lets them know what to say and how to direct the people of God. 
And I sure pray that I've heard from God today and believe I have. In the book of 2 Timothy now, in third chapter, into the New Testament, tells us the power and the origin of the Word of God. <clears throat> All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. 17, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Verse 12, going down to, excuse me, Hebrews 4 and verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So the Word of God is discerning us. I can't tell you how many times in all my, well, coming up on 50 years when I started pastoring and more than 50 years of when I started preaching, about 52. I can't tell you how many times I've preached and then someone come up to me at the church and said, it's did somebody tell you about me? <laughs> no. <laughs> but the Word of God will find us. <laughs> I need the Word of God to find me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I need the Word of God to find me. And then the Scripture speaks about flesh and spirit and so forth in Ephesians chapter 6. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Here's that spiritual conflict. The dark versus the light. But against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. We we need to recognize that high places is actually one of the places that will be called a high place in our walk with God is gathering in the church and gathering and assembling with God's people. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's some battles that go on in the sanctuary. And you may have fought a battle to get here. You may have fought it just today, yesterday, yeah. the last six months. You probably fought some battles before we got here. I have to preach this message. And then we get here and we find out that God does give us the strength and the victory. So we wrestle not against, we don't fight physically with people or with spirits. Although our body language may get a little exuberant, a little demonstrative, but that's not really putting the devil in his place, nor is it bringing God to us necessarily. But I do believe that he said, Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy mind, thy soul, and thy strength. Yeah. And that takes all of it to really totally fulfill that. Amen? Amen. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 13. But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Verse 14. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Yes. Hebrews now 2 and 5. For unto the angels hath he put in subjection the world to come, whereof we speak. But one in a certain place testifies, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Son of man that thou visitest him. Thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. Just to just say those two words right there. Thou hast made him a, what is it? A lot lower? <laughs> Above? No. Just a little lower than the angels. They're actually not nearly as far from us 
as we might think. A supernatural experience, whether it be an angel or whether it be a miracle in your body, your life, your, your past, present, future that God will deliver us from, you will find out that we are not far from him and that his holy angels are not far from us. He's made us certain promises. The angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him. Oh, my. Give me a minute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> You're going to have to go with me a minute here. I don't think I can move right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, Hey, hey, hey. Oh, my Savior, my God. Hallelujah. I worship and adore you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> I, I will talk about myself a little today because uh, I haven't experienced everything that you've experienced, and you may not have experienced everything that I have, but I, I know my stories better than I know yours, but I am going to tell one story that's not about me for sure, but I have felt for a while to talk about the supernatural realm, talk about angels, talk about miracles, things that are above natural, where science cannot see or prove, but sometimes doctors prove it. I had a gentleman, can I call your name? Okay. Now my, your name is totally Wimp Jim of the Gym here. <laughs> wave, it, wave your hand. He had been telling him he had cancer, and he had cancer apparently for a quite a while. He brought me a report this morning and said, no cancer. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Talking about the supernatural. Doctors couldn't do that, but God can. And I appreciate what doctors do, but God is higher above all of us. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, are we about ready to all get a miracle right now? If this word is so powerful and it's inspired by God, and if it's powerful, reaching in and dividing asunder both soul and spirit, you know how intricate that has to be? Soul and spirit are so bound together and so unified together that you just have to have a very, very extra sharp and powerful sword to, or cutting device to get between it. But God knows exactly what things we need, big and small. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I just got to praise him. Hallelujah. My first encounter with angels happened when I was 16 years old. I had been a, just an absolute up and down rebellious young person I had received the Holy Ghost when I was seven and uh, for the lack of whatever prayer on my part I can remember it very clear being baptized in Jesus name being filled with the Holy Ghost At seven years old I, I can see it right now almost like a movie it's very real and uh, went away from the Lord as far as his will and living right but at 16 years old I fell down on my knees and began to pray and ask God to forgive me, and he renewed me and changed my life forever with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is a very powerful, supernatural realm that lives in us. Now, God has never left you. We sometimes walk away or kind of veer off a little bit, but God doesn't leave us. He's right wherever you reach for him. The mention of his name, the giving of your heart, God is right here, right there with you. Praise the Lord Jesus. He answers prayer and he transforms us in so many ways. We were in revival when I was 16 with a young evangelist. Things were kind of different back in those days. That was been 1969, the latter part of the year. And... So this evangelist was unmarried, and of course I was at 16, still unmarried. And we were ready to go to bed, and so we prayed for a while. Then we prepared to sleep. Well, it was a double bed, 
That's all. That's the biggest thing we ever had in our house growing up. And then uh, it was typical for, you know, two guys to sleep in the same bed. There wasn't no weird stuff going on, you know. But I will tell you this. I went to sleep like this. Now, let me also tell you this. As soon as I crossed my arms, I wasn't asleep yet. As soon as I crossed my arms, I began to be thrust up into the heavens. From my bed, I could see the stars. And I'm not talking about some bean dream. I'm talking about a real thing, and I can, I'll, you'll know it as I go. Thrust up into the heavens. I, I watched that on YouTube. I watched that uh, rocket go off this week. Uh, and uh, taking all civilians to the space station. <coughs> People that paid $55 million apiece to go to the space station. Four of them. <laughs> they're professionals in their own right, but they're not astronauts. And um, they, I watched that, and I realized, and they were talking about the G-Force. They were talking about of course, they had, you know, they with that G-force and with all that's involved in that, they have to keep their, their their shields down on their on their helmet, and they have to stay in the space suits, and all those things to protect them. And part of that protection is because of the G-force. And let me say, by the way, that it takes more fuel for that rocket to get off of that pad and get into orbit than it does the rest of the whole trip put together, even if they stayed a month up there. But this evangelist and I were in the bed. I went to sleep. Well, I, last thing I remember, being thrust up. And after I was going up with such force, I suddenly just stopped and seemed to be just suspended among the stars. All around me was a great host of angels. They were distinct, yet I could see through them. They were also transparent. There were no distinct facial features. They looked like wisps of clouds. The supernatural effect of that experience lasted me three days. Now, the next morning, first of all, my friend, the evangelist, older than me called me by my first name James what happened with you last night I said well I can tell you he said well let me just say to you I tried as soon as we lay down he said you were apparently in such a deep sleep he said I called your name I tried to talk to you I reached over your arm and shook you and you were just tight and you didn't respond until you woke up this morning well, I was somewhere else, and I'm thanking God for this supernatural experience that has helped my life for a long time. That day, when I got up and got dressed, went out about my way and visited one of my friends at that time was Ronnie Carter, and uh, went over to his house, and I noticed as soon as I got my feet on the floor that I was walking in about six inches of foam rubber, I, did, I felt like I wasn't really on the ground. I was, but I didn't feel like I was. And that what lasted all that day. I went to bed that night. Next day, <clears throat> that foam rubber got just a little bit thinner, but I could still feel it. Third day, I could still feel, but it was a little thinner. And by the fourth day, it finally wore off. Now, I know that what God put in me, but the way I'm telling you today, that it has not completely wore off and never will. But it, that, that type of experience began to fade finally, but it left in me something that I know God is real. You can't tell me ever any different. I know the Word of God is right. You can never convince me otherwise. Angels are real. Supernatural is real. The clean supernatural of light is real. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And by all means, as I started out reading scriptures today, don't even consider turning to the dark side 
to reach the supernatural. You'll get somewhere you didn't intend to go. I thank God for that. I also want to serve you notice today that angels do drive pickup trucks. My next, my second encounter with what I believe was an angel, it wasn't quite like the first one, but it was definitely so important to me. We were building the first addition on the church on the other side of town. Since then, we built another sanctuary, built this sanctuary, and then kept adding gymnasiums and all kind of stuff back here and, and preparing to build a much larger sanctuary. But we were at this first expansion. There's several people that were, I probably couldn't name them all, but I know Brother Branham was there and the Wickers and I know, I believe Greg, Kirk, Greg Kirkland was there. But anyway, some of them had a lot more savvy than I did, but we kind of sat down and mapped out a little addition and that building's still standing, so it must be all right. But thank God we sold it years ago to be able to help get us over here. But while I was... We had put on the plywood on the roof of those trusses, up, and the plywood was bare, and the men would work after they worked their regular jobs. Occasionally, they would come even when they didn't have to go to work during the week, but on this particular day, they weren't there. And I was up there by myself, and I, real, and I heard that there was possibly a thunderstorm that day, so I was trying to get that covered with that tar paper felt, you know, the felt paper, and so... I was, I was basically, I would tap it, I'd kind of tack it with, with that t and tacks, and then I would unroll it a little bit, and as, as I seen the darkness of that cloud coming more and more, I started just taking that roll and kicking it, you know, and then I'd go behind it as quick as I could, and I'd tack it down. Well, this pickup truck, just seemingly out of nowhere, just the church was on, the road was dirt at that time, later they paved it at, the, at that old original church. But he just stopped in that sand, you know, he slid just a little bit, and his door flew open, and he came running. I've never seen him in my life, never seen him since. But he just came running and almost ran up the ladder. Came up on the roof without even asking permission. And uh, I thanked him for being there, and we together got that roof covered in just a short time. And then, But when he got finished, before I could say more than a quick thank you, his back was already to me. And he was running down that ladder and got in his pickup truck and spun the dirt and left. All I can say is, because of my other experiences, I know the feeling, I know the desperation I was in, I know what I was up there praying about when he showed up, and he's my angel that helped me put that roof on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> you know... The Bible does tell us sometimes that we entertain angels when we're unaware that we are. And uh, I don't know why. Uh, I'm not chauvinist. I'm not uh, gender biased. At least I'm that politically correct. And when you get into other extra genders, I'm a little, I have a little problem. But I, somehow or another, it seems like the people that came to me as angels were all men. And it just so happens that way. I want to tell you a little bit about, a little more. I, went up, I used to go to the church and pray quite a bit because we lived right beside it over there on the other side of town. And so it wasn't a matter of having to get in the car and drive. I could even just walk over there in my sweatpants and my shirt or whatever and um, pray by myself, nobody else there. And one late afternoon, it began to, as it was growing dark outside, I was over there praying. And as I was praying, suddenly... Well, let me tell you what I was praying. I was, I was praying to, that God would bind all the resources of all the bars in Bellevue and close them down. And, and as I really took authority, I was also working with the mayor at that time because the mayor was a very good Catholic man and he really had a great moral compass and he wanted me to help him 
to, at that time, they were wanting to extend the hours. Used to, you couldn't buy alcohol after certain hours. I don't know how it is now. And so forth. So they were, he didn't want it to be extended. They didn't want it to move. He didn't want any more of it. He didn't want more accidents. They didn't want people drinking more and more. And that makes sense for the safety of our city. But I was with him during that, and also I was praying. I, you know, he had his way, but I had my way. And I don't know about him, can't say, but I can tell you right now, I know there are supernatural forces at work for us and against us. And I intend to seek after those that are for us and for this earth and for our city and for your home and your family. Even though some are grown and gone, God is in control in all reality. So I was praying and I was taking authority over all that alcoholism and all that stuff. And suddenly as I was praying, it felt like a tornado, just a small tornado. I mean, it was very real came in that sanctuary, it was, it was all, nobody was there, I just had a few little lights on, and I was walking up down that center aisle praying, and that dark tornado came in there and just started trying to rip me, it, it felt like it was just twisting my hair, my clothes were flapping, I just, it felt so real. And, uh, and finally, I didn't know what to do, it actually scared me at first, and it kind of knocked me off my focus, what I was really trying to stay on for a little while and for just, well, it was just a, two or three minutes. And then I just began to say the name of Jesus. 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 I just kind of said his name. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. And all of a sudden, it, it seemed that some kind of a, like a bolt or not a whole ball, but just a thin sliver of light just come in there and slash right down on both sides of me and that thing just burst it just went away completely now here's here's the confirmation i got back home as soon as i walked in the door my wife said what happened over there i said what do you mean she said i saw a dark dark cloud like a tornado trying to destroy you i said well it happened but it didn't destroy me <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank God for a wife that's hooked in, huh? I thank God for that. You know, through the years, one of the things that seems to have happened uh, to me is bumping into angels. Now, a lot of y'all that have been here a while know this. Uh, and but the first time it happened, I was preaching in the home of Duck Dynasty. Not in their home, but in the hometown. West Monroe, Louisiana. And, uh, but they weren't a dynasty then. That was some time back. I was preaching and I kind of stepped back and as I was stepping back in my preaching I, I just turned around and said excuse me I really thought I bumped into somebody and the pastor of that church noticed it and he noticed how real and how true and sincere my excuse me was and the, just the way everything moved and stopped and everything happened as soon as I got through preaching, the Lord was moving greatly, and he got to the pulpit and said, Folks, this preacher tonight has bumped into an angel. There had to be something there because of the whole way it worked. That was at Brother Shirty's in West Monroe, Louisiana, or also known as Balkanville at that time. It was a tremendous experience. And I don't know why God has done that for me, but standing in this very pulpit since we've been in this sanctuary, it has been so real one time. I just thought so, just like somebody had walked up behind me and put their hand right here on my shoulder, heavy, and like they wanted to speak to me. Well, I figured that would be my wife, probably. Or it could have been one of the other leaders and ministers of the church that was wanting to have me. I was, it was during, it was, I was through preaching, and I was just exhorting, and people were praying. Things were happening, and they put my, their hand on my shoulder, and I looked. I actually ended up turning all the way around and look. It's just as empty as it is right now back here. And, uh, and so I know that it had to be something that I couldn't see, but something that had, after all, you, you read it out loud with me, a little lower than the angels. We're really, it's not really that separated. And, and uh, I dare say that every person here, most everybody for sure, has had a time in your life where you felt like, whether it was on the highway, whether it was in some other dangerous situation, whether it was 
whatever, some way, somehow, that there was some amount, great or small, of supernatural invention, uh, intervention. Amen. And, uh, and Lord, have mercy on the highways. We do sometimes call on Jesus. And when air, we're on an airplane flight and that thing starts bouncing all around, there's a lot of people that never said Jesus in a long time that say it and mean it. <laughs> but, you know, the Lord does intervene. He does help us. And his angels, as I read to you, they're sent to be ministering spirits. Well, you can't see a spirit unless they want you to. And in their case, they have the option. Remain invisible. And in some ways, apparently, stay invisible, but become a little bit tangible. Enough for me to bump into. <laughs> or enough for me to see the works of their hand. And so, I know that we all have had certain incredible experiences. I'm going to tell one more, and then I'm going to uh, try to wrap this up. Um, I called this brother last night and this morning, and and uh, I can't. I'm looking. Okay. I said if you're if you're not in town, I'm. I just want you to know I'm going to tell your story in the morning. So he's been warned, and I talked to Trace, his brother, and he told me to. He reminded me and helped me get it right. And uh, so if he's right, I'm right. But there, his wife is sitting over there, and the wonderful people involved in those families but years ago um, we had a group of students I, if I remember right this part I didn't ask but if I remember right they were like dual enrolled they were still coming to our Christian Academy <coughs> but also went to the um, <clears throat> I'll get to it the the college junior college up here at that time was called junior college and or community college. So they, they were coming back from that, and they got here in Bellevue in one of the streets, and somehow they ended up with an automobile accident. And it and the car hit them just in a way that caused that band to just flip over on its side, just turn over on its side. And so they they would start over course and in shock, and they began to climb up out of that thing and look around, and they got to take an account of all their friends, and they knew one was missing. So as they went around the van, now, Brother Donnie Ellis was involved in this. He's the pastor where Pastor Jason's preaching today down in Dade City now. But he was just a teenager then. And now that boy used to pray. I mean, he could talk in tongues in the middle of Kmart. Well, today, more like Publix or something else. But he could, he, that man, that boy just walks with God. I, I believe he still does. If you ever hear him in the prayer room praying, you'll see that he's not shy about reaching into the supernatural. And so they, were, they had this situation, and they climbed out, and they got to looking around, and Donnie Ellis saw feet sticking out from under the van. It was down flat on its side, a body under it, feet sticking out. Well, Donnie, well, somebody will probably tell him I said this, but if you want to compare him with your fingers, he'd be this one right here. <laughs> he's still that way. But he's a nice, good-looking boy, man now. Got three children. Doubled up on us. Got him twins and then a single. That's pretty cool. Double portion. He always believed in stuff like that. But he saw these feet and so he Try, he, he reached down, actually made an effort to lift that van, and maybe others helped him. I don't remember. But there, there was no way. It just wasn't going to happen. And this is what I was, re, I, I was told again last night, exactly what I'm telling you today, so it might, it's not mixed up in memory. I confirmed it, that four men, big, muscular men. Yeah, Donnie was speaking in tongues. I, Yeah because I said he speaks in tongues anywhere almost, but when he was desperate about getting this young man out from under that van, and he, and, and these men, four men showed up, just showed up, and just lifted that van right up, and Donnie was right there at the feet and just pulled Clay out from under the car, Clay Dawson. And, um, and it, was a, it was a tremendous thing, and uh, then they, once they got him out, 
they, uh, some were looking at him and attending to him, and nobody had gotten there yet. No ambulance, no police or anything had gotten there. It was all happening very quick, as you know it can in a situation like that. And then they noticed the engine was running, and there was gas then pouring out on the ground. They were very concerned, and Donnie Ellis, again, he, he saw the ignition on. He reached in to cut the ignition off, and he couldn't reach it, you know. <clears throat> he couldn't reach it. So he, he's, he's spiritual enough. He can take a little teasing. I know y'all are all going to tell him, so I don't care. But he reached in and couldn't turn it off, and one of those four, those four men was still there. And one of them just said, excuse me, and reached in there and turned the ignition off. And then Donnie was amazed and looking and probably still looking into the vehicle because this all happened so fast. When he turned around to say, thank you very much, they, they were gone. They weren't there. Now, they all believe, and I believe, and I, was, I lived through that. And I and, uh, wasn't in a band, but I mean, I was here pastoring, and I lived through the time of testimony of that, and I know that it was real. And when you look at the whole dynamics, it's the only way they could have gotten him out of there. But these four men just suddenly appeared and disappeared. Now, I cannot believe anything else than four angels showed up, lifted that van up, and allowed them to pull him out. Hallelujah. Now, there's a hallelujah. Do you believe in miracles? Do you believe in life-changing miracles? Hallelujah. 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 Oh, God. You know, God is a supernatural healer. Be seated, if you will, for a moment. God is a supernatural deliverer. I mean, we've seen people come in here that have been an alcoholic for so many years. Some of them are sitting in this place right now. And with a Holy Ghost baptism came into them, they were delivered and never had to go through any programs and never had to have some kind of withdrawals. But God delivered. And He still delivers. Whatever it is, whether it's a, some substance abuse or whether it is a, a, an emotional situation or whether it is, you know, Old age even, he can help us up a little bit. Praise God. But God's a healer. <coughs> I had a brother this morning tell me, he remembered when I had COVID and we'd been praying for me. He said, I didn't know if I was going to live. I didn't either, brother. <laughs> I didn't know either. And I uh, had one of the most precious friends uh, among my friends in that place with me, and we both didn't know if we'd make it. Matter of fact, we were kind of writing our last words here to each other on text after we got to where we didn't have all this mass stuff on and all this blowing air. And so we, we did those things. But you see, the Lord helped me. And really, me preaching today, you just never heard me preach. You don't know how far I've come. <laughs> you don't know how far I've come. That thing left me with such a foggy brain, I couldn't be looking at you and talking at the same time. I had to read every word I said. So you need to see how far God can bring you. He may not do it all at once, but be not discouraged. God can take care of everything. Hallelujah. If God lets something kind of continue in some small way, don't worry. He's got a reason for it. and He's going to bring you through better with more faith with more encouragement than you ever had. Praise God. Praise God. Now, I just want to tell you, I just want to tell you that there's nothing more powerful or more transformative or more supernatural than the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now, I know that speaking in tongues is a little bit, you know, out, outside the realm of many of us and maybe even our religion or whatever, but... I just know it's real. I, I've seen numbers of times where it was an earthly language and people in the audience or in some, once in the prayer room where somebody was speaking in tongues and they, they spoke in a language. One case, it was a person that was, her parents were, and she was from uh, somewhere in the Arab, Arabic world over there in Lebanon or somewhere over there and she 
uh, knew the language, although she didn't hardly ever speak much anymore, but she knew the sound, she knew the words. Somebody was speaking in tongues and talking straight to her in her mother's native tongue, and there's all kind of dialects, you know. And so God is a miracle worker. There is a place where the supernatural comes through. And then, of course, the Bible said, though we speak with the tongues of men and of angels, so there's also that men's tongues and other tongues. On the day of Pentecost, when they first received the Holy Ghost, they spoke in a language that the people that were gathered there from all over that known world had come together into that place, that they understood the languages that people were speaking and marveled and said, how are they doing this? I know that they're, they, they don't know these languages. They're just poor fishermen and people that's just lived in a very small area. They don't know these languages, but you see, sometimes it's the tongues of men, sometimes it's the tongues of angels. But I urge you with all my heart to reach out for the supernatural. Don't allow yourself to be deprived of things that are far above and beyond. Anything we could ask or think. Hallelujah. I'm going to sing a little chorus here, and I'm asking each of you to at least make some movement toward the front. And just with this song right here, you'll see whether it's a healing miracle you need, a reviving, a renewing in your soul that you need. It's a in baptism of the Holy Ghost that you've never experienced before. Whatever, if it's something you've, the Lord's given you about water baptism, let the Lord speak to us today. Praise God. Give me that key we had a while ago. Mm -hmm. There is nothing, no, nothing. There's nothing. You believe this? That my God can't do.
worship for the Lord right now. Hallelujah. God's meeting needs. Look around you. If there's somebody that's that's reaching, pray with them. Stretch your faith toward them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the supernatural. Hallelujah. Break every yoke and break every chain. situations. Hallelujah. God, whatever you have to do, God, in my life, whatever you have to do in my family, God, every supernatural situation, Lord, we'll take it, God. We need you. We need you. That's it. That's it. Let's keep preaching right now. Hallelujah. Come on, this was more than just story time. This is faith being released. This is heaven coming down in the midst of natural things changing them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, allow yourself to be challenged. Allow your, your faith to be stirred right now. Thank you, Jesus. Miracles and wonders. There is nothing, no, nothing that my God i
Somebody needs to know today that God's got you. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to know today that God's going to take care of you. Hallelujah. You're not fighting this thing by yourself. You're not handling things on your own. Hallelujah. There's a host behind you. There's strength behind you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may not always see it, but there are times where you've got that indication of that little nudge or that little touch. Maybe it's that flicker or that glimmer to the side, but God's got you. Hallelujah. There is a supernatural work happening. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, we're asking you right now in this wonderful atmosphere, Lord, that you would send ministering spirits, angels to our family, angels to impossible situations. Hallelujah. In this end time, that you would stir the hearts of our loved ones that you would go to our children, go to our, our co-workers, that they would be stirred, that they would be touched and ministered to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Impossible things are changed because of a supernatural God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord right now. Atmosphere from the very first song, the Holy Ghost was moving through this place. Supernatural things were happening. Actually, even a lot earlier at the prayer room last night, so many wonderful things happening all through Apostolic Directive classes today.